This is RTV News with me, Isabel Masozera, and here are our top stories. President Paul Kagame has said that the last recent talks in Angola with his DRC counterpart are a starting point to end tensions between the two countries as Rwanda wants the existing issues resolved peacefully. Also, women in Gasibo district are testifying that they are now taking up manual work, which was traditionally only done by men. Thanks for watching our TV news. We are delighted to have your company and hope you had a fruitful week. Now on to our top story. President Paul Kagame has said that the recent talks in Angola with his DRC counterpart are a good starting point to end the tensions between the two countries as Rwanda wants the existing issues resolved peacefully. The head of state made the remarks in an interview with the French news channel France 24 on Friday, Innocent Mugabo now reports. Mr. President, thank you for welcoming us here. You're welcome. President Paul Kagame's interview with France 24 focused mainly on the ongoing war between the DRC government forces, FRDC, and M23, which is the source of tensions between Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. This comes at a time when the two heads of state met in Rwanda, Angola, for talks with Angolan President Jaul Lorenko acting as the mediator on the matter. President Paul Kagame notes that although this is not the first time such talks have taken place, his wish and hope is that Rwanda's talks will be a good start to resolving the matter. I don't think anyone is interested in the tensions or conflicts or whatever crisis. So it's on that backdrop that I am happy that we even agreed to meet and meet uh, in Angola under the uh, mediation of uh, uh, President uh, Lorenzo, President of Angola. And indeed, we had a good discussion. We, we, I think both sides, uh, at least what I assessed it to be, were looking forward to making progress. I hope so, and, uh, and that's what I think, that's what I want. This one in Angola is another step forward, I believe. Sources in the DRC, especially in the eastern part of the country, say that since the end of the Luanda talks, fighting between the FRDC and M23 rebels has not stopped. The DRC government continues to accuse Rwanda of supporting the M23 and President Felix Antoine Kisekedi recently told the British Daily newspaper The Financial Times that his country is ready to launch a war on Rwanda if it continues what he called provocative actions against his country. Responding to this and other questions, President Kagame said that it was incomprehensible how Rwanda is being deliberately accused by those who ignore the DRC's provocation and the root cause of the problem. Rwanda is accused by the U.S. or by anybody, but they are silent, deliberately, I guess, on issues of FDRR that have been there for the last 25 years. This, this is, so you, you would imagine, in fact, when you hear people say those things you, you, you just mentioned, it's as if Rwanda is just a troublemaker, they went into Congo, they started a war, they are doing this, they even silent about the bombings of our territory by Congolese army. They are silent about infiltration in 2019, November, of these uh, FDRR who entered into the northern part of our country and caused mayhem. They are, they are, if we are talking about provocations, how, how do you decide to share across the border into the population. President Kagame also slammed the international community over the M23 issue and also refuted claims that Rwanda supports the group. First of all, M23 is not Rwanda's problem. And these are not Rwandans. And we don't need them for anything. Second, 
The history of these M23 people is well known, has been discussed with President Sekedi himself and the government of Congo and so on. And these are not people who came from Rwanda. And how Congo makes that problem of M23. Do you consider running or? Well, I consider running for another 20 years. Really? I have no problem with that. Really? Yes. But this we means are the president. We are talking about elections. At the end of the interview, Mark Perelman also asked President Kagame if he plans to run for re-election in the 2024 presidential election, to which he replied that elections depend on the choices of the people and that if it were possible, he would still be standing for election 20 years from now. Innocent Mogabo, RTV News. Thank you, Innocent. Still making headlines on Saturday afternoon at Uruguero Village, President Paul Kagame met with speakers who were in Kigali for the just concluded 47th plenary session of the Parliamentary Assembly of La Francophonie. The session was attended by up to 300 delegates from 90 French speaking countries. Moving on, Muslims in Rwanda say that Eid al-Adha, the day of sacrifice, builds in them love and fellowship values. We have the details with Olive and Tete. Allah. Allah. At the Kigali Regional Stadium in Nyamirambo, a crowd of Muslims gathered for a prayer of the sacrifice day, which also marks the end of 10 days of various activities, including helping the needy. The Mufti of Rwanda, Sheikh Salim Hitimana, pointed out that they are grateful to God for enabling them to do good deeds. He also noted that the sacrifice is of a great value. What we should learn from Abraham first is obeying and loving God to a point where God called Abraham in Koran his loved one. God ordered him to sacrifice his only son. It was a huge sacrifice, and it would be hard for everyone to understand it. But he obeyed God, and God compensated him with an animal to do the offering. The second thing is advising other people and setting a good example. Abraham told people not to pray idols, but encouraged them to pray only to God. Sheikh Salim Hitimana also notes that today's celebrations should go hand in hand with patriotism. When the country is not peaceful, with no security, praying, praising and rejoicing in God would be impossible. That is why Prophet Muhammad told us that when you get the opportunity to find yourself in a safe country like ours in Rwanda, that person will have the opportunity to have the whole world in his hands. As Rwandans, God has given us everything. We have to take time to think about our country, to pray for it, and to pray for our leaders who lead us well. Development and food come only when one is safe. Some members of parliament who attended the meeting of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Francophonie also attended the prayer. They know that attending the prayer in a safe country like Rwanda made them feel at home. We thank God for allowing us to be with you today to participate in this day of sacrifice, which is of a great value to Muslims around the world. Today it is as if we are in our families. Yes, we are away from our homes, but we appreciate the fact that we participated in the prayer. Our hearts are full of joy. We have complied with the requirements of our beliefs. We are very grateful to the government of Rwanda and the members of the parliament. Muslims in Rwanda say that the day of sacrifice teaches them to share with their neighbors friends and the needy. It is a day of rejoicing. It is a day of reaping the blessings that will help us to come before God. It is a fellowship, whether it is with our fellow believers or not. The sacrifice we offer, one part is for the family, the other is for the poor, and the third is for the population. We divide it into three equal parts. The day of the sacrifice comes as 38 Rwandans took part in the pilgrimage to Mecca. Olive Nete, RTV News.
Thank you, Olive, and we wish the Muslim community happy celebrations. Moving on, women in Gasibo district are testifying that they are now taking up manual work, which was traditionally done by only men. This kind of courageous work is now promoted by these women who say their attitude is a result of Rwanda's good governance that acknowledges the fact that a woman is valuable and capable. More in this report. Sibo District is one of the few places where women have a positive mindset towards manual work and believe that what men can do, women can do too. They testify that they have made progress because they have been given the platform to come out of their comfort zone and take up work which was previously done only by men and they say that their families are now thriving. I dared to do it. I used to sit home and depend on the man, but I said no more. I decided to go to his workplace and check if there's something I can do to earn. No man can now look down on me and say, I can buy you chicken. I can buy it for myself. We have no problem. We were liberated. Me, I feel there's no job I can't do. When you have hands and feet and the ideas, whatever you want to do, you can do. Before, women went through so much. But today, women have rights and they can do anything without problems because our government supports us. Being mentally liberated has changed their lives, and the men who work alongside them reiterate that women are also capable of doing manual work very well. Women are now more daring. They no longer stay home and wait for the man to come and help. They help us instead as we work together. There is nothing they can't do. You can't underestimate your woman. If you don't have a job, you can send her to work. Although these women have made notable progress, they say they are not developing as fast as they would like due to lack of access to funding from financial institutions that facilitate them to get loans which they need for capital. Like me who dared to do it, I do it feeling I love my work. But depending on where I want to see myself, there's still a problem of access to funding, which is the biggest problem I have. Joining cooperatives for faster development is still something local officials in Gasibo are emphasizing sizing for all people not just women what we want to tell men is to allow their wives to work and trade our country has made sure that men and women have equal rights we have gender equality there are things women can do sometimes that men can't do we should not have scenarios where people feel something can only be done by a man or a woman let everyone focus on what they can do and how they can make the best from it to better themselves and their family we have banks with women supportive programs like bdf that women can approach for help to access funding from banks the fact that gender equality is now taught even in schools is testament to the changing mindsets of Rwandans moving into the future. You're still watching RTV News. Now, residents of Nyabihu District are delighted that the completion of the power substation and the Mukungwa Nyabihu power line is going to solve the problem of power shortage that they had, an opportunity to accelerate their development. The Minister of State in the Ministry of Infrastructure is urging those in charge of providing electricity to provide the best possible services whenever they are needed. Needed. Martina Abera explores. The Nyabihu power substation with a megawatt 40 capacity has been inaugurated at the same time as the 29 kilometer Mukungwa Nyabihu power line with a capacity of 110 kV. It is an initiative that the residents are happy about because it is going to solve the power shortage issue of every now and then that would make it impossible to do anything. Normally, our children will be in schools without power, which would hinder it from being a smart classroom. But now, we are very excited because the issue is going to be solved. I would like to thank His Excellency Paul Kagame because whenever he says something, he acts upon it. 
He said that we would receive power before his term ends, and that has happened. We are very happy. Uwase Patrici, the Minister of State and the Ministry of Infrastructure, says this is an initiative to help the government of Rwanda to provide sufficient power to the people as it is for their benefit with the removal of the one that wouldn't provide enough energy. We will no longer use the monophasic power. We shall never experience a time when one would turn on the power and it refuses to work. This initiative that you see behind you is what will help us make all that feasible. The Minister of State also stressed that this initiative will help in the process of reducing electricity wastage. Normally, when there is no power, there is no electricity as well. Today, we want to reduce the wastage of electricity, where by 2024 it will be at 15%. We are currently almost reaching our goal because we are at 19%. However, such initiatives like this bring us even closer to attaining that goal. The executive secretary of the Western Province, Juan Baje Maria Florence, reminded investors in the province that they should take advantage of this power and make use of it. We have Lake Kivu, where you can't get from anywhere else. We also have Nyungwe Forest and water bodies in Gishkwati. We have many infrastructures that can attract investors to come here, and they already started coming here, which you can clearly see that there is no loss in investing here. Nevertheless, the Minister of State and the Minister of Infrastructure, Uwase Patrici, reminded the authorities that their citizens should be given priority in the service they receive. It is really important that the citizens are put first to their needs in terms of words and action. If a citizen comes to ask for electricity, they should receive it immediately. We take the needs of the citizens very seriously. Both the Mukungwa Nyabehu Power Line and Nyabehu Power Substations were built by the government of Rwanda and are fully operational at a cost of 15 billion Rwandan francs. Martina Avera, RTV News. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for the pleasure of your company. I am Isabel Masozera, and on behalf of the entire RTV News team, thanks for watching and stay with us.